Jim Rickards is an American investment banker and author on matters of finance and precious metals. He has been following the silver market for decades. This is what he says. This is not the petro yuan. This is not the petro ruble. Mm -hmm. This is not a gold back yuan. This is not a gold standard. This is not the end of the US dollar. It's not the end of the euro. It's not the end of the world. It's not any of those things. But that's what everyone's running around on websites or whatever shouting. It's none of those things. In fact, quite the opposite. And this is where the Russian mentality comes in. The BRICS want the dollar to be around. They want the dollar gold market to exist because they get to free ride. The dollar has to do all the dirty work in the gold space and BRICS get the free ride by declaring one brick equal to a weight of gold. Again, weight's the key. The value of the brick is not determined with reference to any other currency. It's determined with reference to gold by weight of gold. Now, and I don't know the weight, they'll pick one, but again, it doesn't matter because the it's not even it's math, it's logic. And by the way, now um we're back to Aristotle's transit of law. And this is the key. This is this unlocks the whole thing. Because um Aristotle said, you know, if A equals B equals C, then A equals C. The B can drop out. It's not even uh, arithmetic. It's uh, it's logic. Uh, it's, right. it's called the transit of law. I'm, I'm certain Aristotle invented it. If any Greek scholars know an earlier source, let me know. Um, so what, what the BRICS have done is they have dodged the biggest bullet, the thing that caused Bretton Woods ultimately to fail, the thing that potentially stands in the way of all this. They've defined their currency by weight of gold. Now, uh, a weight of gold has a dollar value, right? So A equals B equals C. One brick equals one, could be an ounce or a kilo, it doesn't matter, call it an ounce. One brick equals one ounce of gold equals today, 1970, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, through the transit of law, drop out the B and one brick equals 1970, $1,970. But that's constant. I mean, that logic works for a moment in time, but it's not fixed because the price of gold is going to fluctuate daily or a minute, a minute by minute, right? So what's going to happen is the dollar gold called exchange rate, the dollar price of gold. So the LBMA, the COMEX, the the London Metals Exchange, um, you know, JP Morgan, unallocated forward contracts, the whole huge gold market in dollars is still going to exist. The BRICS want the dollar to be around. They want the dollar gold market to exist because they get to free ride. The dollar has to do all the dirty work in the gold space and bricks get to free ride by declaring one brick equal to a weight of gold. Again, weight's the key. They just let the dollar gold market go wherever it goes. And the brick is worth an ounce or whatever, kilo, whatever. And uh, yeah, the dollar equivalent under the transit of law changes, but they're not pegged to the dollar. They're not fighting that fight. So this, uh, I analogize this. It's like you're in your house in the backyard, you know, your landscaper is like digging trenches and putting in plants and sweating and doing all this work. And you're sitting there with a glass of iced tea enjoying the view. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. In other words, the bricks get to free ride on the dollar gold system. And they don't, they want that system. They don't want it to go away because they get the benefit of a gold value. Now think of what the BRICS don't have to do in this scenario. They don't have to buy gold. They don't even have to own gold. They do, but they no one, no one in the world has enough gold to back a currency. This currency, the BRIC will not be redeemable into gold. Now maybe there's a dealer somewhere who will take it. That's that's between you and, and the dealer. But it's not like you're going to be able to march down to the People's Bank of China with a pile of bricks and say, give me the gold. They're not going to do it. So it's not redeemable. Um, they're not going to make a market. Uh, they're not going to maintain a value because they don't have to because it's by weight. They just get to sit back and piggyback on the dollar gold system and let do the dollar do all the dirty work. The first one is, is the Fed the ultimate buyer of last resort of treasuries? Yes. Um, but there's an intermediate buyer, which is the U.S. banking system. In the 1950s, uh, a typical large U.S. bank balance sheet was 40% treasuries. That was normal. That wasn't like hoarding. Uh, today, it's about 5 to 7%. 
So I think you'll get a phone call to Jamie Dimon and yeah. uh, get the, all the other CEOs, uh, Jane Meyer, uh, the lady of city. Um, they'll call them first and say, you, people got to buy bonds. And of course, they're all under the thumb of the US government and they will. So you might have a pretty good cushion of bond buyers before you have to turn to the Fed and expand the Fed balance sheet. Now, that doesn't Especially really if it's a recession, because they're not going to want to make loans with that money. They'd rather buy treasuries that are perceived to be safe. Probably. Correct. Especially with positive positive carry and lever, lever 10 to 1 under Basel, you can make uh, very good returns on equity. So, um, so you do have a large pool of intermediate buyers before you get to the Fed. It doesn't really solve the problem. It just passes it around the banking system. By the way, the Chinese are doing something very similar right now. Everyone's like, why hasn't the... Um, uh, People's Bank of China sold more dollars. Well, it's because they're making the banks do it. The commercial banks are, are selling the dollars and propping up the yuan. Uh, and we can see something similar in the United States. So that's one. I, I just kind of pencil in the commercial banking system, at least the big banks, as a potential buyers of not quite last resort um, as a way to put it. But the other the other thing, um, the, the BRICS, what they've done, this is part of the brilliance, they've opted out of the exchange market. They're like, because normally if the dollar is right. getting weaker, you're getting stronger. Um, that's bad for exports. It's bad for export right. related jobs, et cetera. You know, and this currency wars. That was my first book, Currency Wars. But they've, by defining their currency by weight of gold, not not dollar amount, but by weight of gold, they're out of the foreign exchange market. Yeah, so and they can they, they can just sit back and watch the show. We haven't learned about uncertainty because we already know about uncertainty. We all understand that we're living in an uncertain world and we have to make allowance for that. So we didn't learn that. We already knew that. I said, well, what is new is the tempo of shocks is accelerating. Mm-hmm. Um, there are shocks go back to the panic of 1837 or 1857 or 1898. You know, you know, all of them. Uh, I've, I've lived through another enough of them. I'm kind of a magnet for trouble, but there's no end to financial panics. Um, but uh, what's uh, what, what what's different about this is that uh, we may be uh, looking at a, a, a tempo that's a lot faster. It's not every seven years or every 10 years anymore between the, uh, the U S is, Using, losing the war in Ukraine badly. Uh, you might even see Poland come in and bite off the Western half of uh, Ukraine, what former Ukraine up to Lviv. Um, and Russia take the bottom one third, including the entire coastline to Odessa and leave a little rump state, landlocked rump state around Kiev, maybe. Um, so uh, and there's no way there's no way to cover this stuff up. The, the New York Times and the uh, Washington Post, I read them the same way I read Pravda during the Cold War. It's all lies, <laughs> but they're valuable lies because it's good to know what the other guy's lying. Exactly. Yeah. He's lying. He's like, you must be you must have a reason for that. It must be important to you. So there's intelligence value in yeah. lies. And that's why I read the Times and the Post. Small ebook, big impact, the wealth tree. The only four ways that will make you financially free forever. Download it here for free.